Hello everybody, this is Rob Redman of Pariah Studios uh, making this video for 3D World. Now in this video it's going to be a, just a kind of a quick introduction to X-Particles and how the system works. Now once you've downloaded and installed it, either the demo or the kind of the purchased version, um, you'll find that you have this new X-Particles menu up here. And the first thing you want to do is just go to Load Palette. And once you do that, it gives you a new palette with all the icons that you need. Now I'm going to dock this to the right hand side of my viewport just so it's easy to get to kind of all the time and I can kind of click things and use the attributes manager which you'll do quite a lot uh, with X particles so I'm going to grab the dotted line there and just pop that over to the side now while you're learning what all of these are you might want to just right click and go down to show text so you get the names as well now if you find that these are in your way you can always control click and just hide that there and bring it back with just a simple left button click there okay so just in case you didn't know if you want to keep this layout or you've changed any other buttons anywhere else you know you might have kind of dragged things about and changed them you can just come up to window go to customization and you can save this layout as and you can give it a name um, so you can have lots of them and then once you've got those you can come up to here where it says layout at top right just click on it and you get a list of different ones that you've got saved along with the presets that come with Cinema 4D. Okay, now let's dive into X-Particles and I'll just show you how to get this up and running so you can then explore it and kind of work out what all of these different modifiers and everything do. You can, if you want, add things like emitters and then add in modifiers and everything individually one by one as you go. But actually there's this thing called the system which does it all for you. It sets it all up neatly and packages things in the right place. And down here we've got generator objects. So the first thing we want to do is actually generate some particles. So I'm going to click on the menu and choose an emitter. And you can see we have the blue square here. We have some kind of scaling controls or size of the emitter controls. And if we press play, we get a steady stream of particles. Now, you might not be able to see them overly clearly in this viewport display. So what I'm going to go do is go to display. I'm going to change these to um, filled circles. And there are lots of different options as you saw there um, we'll just force these which means that you get them there in the viewport hit play and hopefully you can see those a bit more clearly now I'll zoom in a bit as well so I'm just going to let them carry on playing so you can see what I'm doing I'm going to go back to my emission and I'm going to turn the birth rate down to let's say 200 uh, which will be enough to help us visualize what's going on but not so many that uh, it slows the viewport down um, and the reason I'm doing that is because I'm on a, a MacBook here for this video um, and it's also running kind of, you know, a few things in the background. I've got the screen recording software. So anything I can do to help it speed it up for you is probably a good thing. I'm going to add a load more frames to my scene just so we have a bit more time for movement. Um, at this point, you probably want to go in and make sure that your document settings are what you want them to be. So I'm going to make this a 25 frames per second scene. Now, what I want to do is I want to give these some kind of random motion um, and to do that, um, we're going to use some modifiers. So I'm going to use um, something called the turbulence modifier, which gives this some really nice kind of different noise options. So if we go back to our system and down here in modifiers, click on the, the, the little drop down, go to turbulence. And as soon as I press play now, you'll see they all kind of start to drift around. Now you can control the scale and the speed and all that kind of stuff of this, this motion down here. Um, now there are options for groups because you can have different particle groups within the same system doing different things. Or you can have, you know, one group could fire particles forward and then explode into new particles or a second group. We're not going to worry about anything quite that complex here. What we are going to do is just show you how the scale works. I'm going to really crank that up. And hopefully you can see that the scale of this movement is quite a lot larger. Um, for this example, I want to bring it down a bit. I'm also going to change the type to curl. Now you see there are different types of, of noise. And this is kind of like the underlying noise pattern that drives this. So I'm going to use curl, which gives this a lovely kind of sweeping curly motion. Now, this curly motion is great. Um, I might increase the strength a bit and you can see a small increase here in the strength actually makes a big difference in the viewport and that's possibly too much 
or even reduce it. Let's see what happens when we go back to the start point. Okay, so they kind of undulate in a nice way. I like that. Um, what I want to do now is make sure that my particles kind of flow through the scene. And there are a number of ways of doing that, but I'm going to use a second modifier. And rather than going to this modifiers menu here, I'm actually going to go back to the system and go to the drop down and add some wind. While I'm working on the wind, I'm going to turn off that turbulence. And now you can see the wind's actually speeding. If, if I turn the wind off, you can see they go more slowly. If I turn the wind on, it kind of pushes them a bit quicker. I think it needs to be a bit stronger than that again. And what I'm doing is just kind of setting a, an overall movement across the scene, um, which will help counteract the turbulence. So we'll have some curl. Um, but also it will it will kind of try and push the, the particles across a little bit rather than floating backwards. This is looking all right. I'm going to increase it just a bit as I sit here and watch. Just to get the balance right. Now you can see there is a turbulence option here, but that's turbulence within the wind. This is nothing to do with the turbulence modifier up here. So you can add a little bit more secondary kind of randomization if you want to. Now the other options, like the scale again, the scale of the wind, um, not going to worry about, we're not going to talk about all of the, the slightly more complex things like fall offs and things like that here. I really want to kind of show you how it works, how the system is actually set up um, and then let you kind of fly away with it all. So you can do some really cool things like you could make the particles um, geometry and they could be kind of little birds flapping that you XF out to another file and you could use a, a flocking modifier to get that lovely kind of starling motion where you get the massive groups of starlings okay so let's move on to how we might make these renderable in cinema 4d as standard you have this kind of create shaders and with x particles you get this extra x particles material you can add this in and it works in a kind of a similar way to how you might expect with the um the pirate cluster material which is also in there so you have things like age effects so in the color we could turn on age and you can have a gradient so that the particles will change color over age we're not going to do that here we're actually going to just delete that material i'm going to add something bright here let's do a kind of a bright pink just so it's visible to you and we're going to go back to our system and we're going to say oh you know what i'd like to kind of merge all of these particles into one kind of fluid globular shape so i'm going to go back to my generator objects and i'm going to choose a skinner and it doesn't look particularly pretty to start with let's just drag our material onto it and that's just so you can see it now i'm just going to press pause uh, and you can see this is encapsulating all of the particles we have even the ones that are starting to kind of stray off on their own all looking really good but it looks a bit rough and ready if we go to the skin option, you can see we have polygon size, 10 centimeters, and then render polygon size, which is five centimeters. So our mesh will be more refined when it renders. We could turn this down to five, just so you can see the comparison. And you can see how much tighter they are to the underlying, poly uh, underlying particles. Something else you can do here is use the surface level to kind of tighten that mesh around the particles as well, uh, which you might want to do. Um, for various reasons, you might want to have these as kind of like gravityless balls of fluid, or you might want to have something a bit less refined, a bit more kind of globular. There are also various types of surface algorithms. Um, so you have blin, blobbies. Um, the biggest difference you'll find going between these is probably the fluid, which is far tighter to the underlying mesh, as you can see there. Um, now, and these ones where if you reduce the surface level, it's kind of making each particle have its own very strong tension. So what you're trying to do is kind of find a balance between the type of surface, the surface level and the polygon sizes. Um, you can do a few other things with this as well. So you might think, well, I've got this Skinner object, but it still looks a bit rough. Why don't I put it into hypernerves? Well, actually, you don't need to. So you can go to smoothing here and you can smooth geometry. It's probably a bit strong for trying to show you this. If I go down to four, let's just deselect so you can see the mesh. In fact, 
the emitters that the um the display is possibly a bit too too big now so let's just go back to dots because it's overpowering what we're seeing so let's go back to the start hit play and there we go so you can see now that this is much smoother than what we had before uh, it's looking much more kind of fluid like which is quite nice and um, and really all you need to do then is kind of set up your scene and your lighting and everything and kind of follow along um, your kind of natural progression. So you've got loads of different things you can do here. You can move particles across the surface so you can have them kind of flowing over a mountain if it was going to be a waterfall. All that kind of stuff, which is all kind of really exciting and interesting. Way too much that you can do in here for this one video, but I wanted to show you just how the system works. Um, so dive in, explore, use some of the different modifiers. Um, you can add trails, so that would be one of the, the, um, the generators, um, which if you have a particle, it follows, it generates a trail across the path of the, the movement of each particle, which can then be swept along a, a sweep nerves, all that kind of stuff. It's really, really, really powerful. Um, and I will talk much more about them in future videos. So if you've never used X-Particles or if you've never seen it before, I hope this be, has been a kind of a useful introduction into how it works. And I'll see you all again in a future video. Thanks very much.